This little tool is the result of over a century of innovation. Our Swiss Army knife are really the best in the world. Now thriving in the digital age, it dates all the way back to the Victorian era. From the technical point of view, it was fantastic. It's used by everyone, from Boy Scouts to presidents. It has everything you need. Who knows how many lives it saved? And how it's made is as ingenious as the tool itself. Enter the iconic Victorinox Mega Factory in Switzerland to discover how they make one of the world's greatest multi-tools. The Swiss Army Knife. It's just a cool knife. Invented more than a century ago for soldiers, this knife is the pinnacle of two and a half million years of evolution. And it continues to evolve, turning from an army gadget to a global brand. Today, we are the biggest pocket knife manufacturer in the world. With outlets in 130 countries, and a vast range of 260 different models, including 100 versions of the classic Swiss Army knife. And as its name implies, every single one is proudly made in Switzerland. The Swiss Army knife has definitively come from Switzerland and has also to be made in Switzerland because it's a part of the history of Switzerland. A history that traces its roots to 1884 when founder Karl Elsener opens a cutlery factory in this small workshop. Today, it's a 36,000 square meter powerhouse of innovation. Enter the iconic Victorinox Mega Factory in Ebach, Switzerland, and discover what it takes to make these world-class pocket tools. We don't have a secret, we have a simple recipe. We try to look at every simple detail. Karl Elsener is the fourth generation in this century-old family business. So when you look at the values of our brand, it's quality, it's functionality, it's innovation, it's iconic design. But I mean, the strongest is really the quality and the functionality. And functionality is key to the Swiss Army Knife's global success. Because under the name Swiss Army Knife, the people expect functions. The star of the series is the aptly named Swiss Champ. This multi-tool boasts eight layers, 22 tools, and 33 different functions. It offers a world of possibilities, if you know how to find them. I'll start out easy. Do you know what that is? This looks to be a screwdriver for a uh, Phillips head. No idea. I don't know if that's the largest knife. I think this is a magnifying glass. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could start a fire with it. I don't know. Maybe to like open something. That's very sharp. This must be a saw. That's a pen? Yeah, it's a pen. Maybe that's to cut something round. Maybe a branch or something. Is so that a nail file? You've got to have the scissors. Pliers. No way. Those are really solid. There's a toothpick. I think that's going to be a bottle opener. Fishing. On one side, it's inches, and then the other side is metric. And I guess you could use this for a um, regular headed screwdriver. There's just so much stuff on there. And that's not all. Hidden in the handle are tweezers, and a stainless steel pin, handy for unclogging nozzles. OK, go ahead. If you were lost in the wilderness, it certainly would come in handy. Like well, get rid of everything in your house and just have this. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have one. And thousands already do. Owners range from Boy Scouts to soldiers to American presidents. Perhaps they have opened with them the most secret contracts and mails they get, yes. Today, 
A workforce close to 1,000 produce over 60,000 pocket knives every single day. To make a single knife takes 450 steps, a passion for perfection and exacting standards. Lots of companies hype quality, but here they mean it. Every step we have to control from A to Z, so we can give the customer the lifelong guarantee. This is very important. And quality follows every stage of production. Every month, between 15 to 20 million parts circulate through this department. Each part goes through seven distinct steps. And the hardest part to produce? The legendary Swiss Army knife blade. Every of these knives has the blade, or the big blade. Now, we'll follow the creation of one blade from beginning to end. Each blade starts off as raw steel. But before moving into production, every inch of this material is inspected. The first test ensures that all rolls of steel are made equal. Then the metal content is analysed. After that, we do an exact analysis with this instrument to see if the specifications are correct. If the alloy is wrong, it undermines durability, as well as the ability to resist corrosion, which means the quality will be poorer. That's why our specifications have to be adhered to exactly. With the all clear, the steel heads to production. First step, cutting out the shape. Historically, each part was forged by hand. Today, it's automated. Tools are made in a stamping machine. Blades, scissors, screwdrivers, the works. Like the raw steel, every single tool goes through extensive quality control. Nothing gets in this product by chance. When we produce a product, we just don't start to sell it. In our engineering department, they still are continuously trying to improve it, to make it better for our customers. It's a constant cycle of dissection and re-engineering. But improving on perfection is no easy task. In our department, we get a lot of inquiries about things like an altimeter, for example, or a barometer. We always get inquiries for a nail clipper. For me, a flashlight would be very important. Of course, we have to be careful with the price structure. As soon as we build in electronic parts, the price will rise at least 10, 20 percent. And that's always such a psychological barrier. I wouldn't put in too much frippery, but keep it simple. You have to remember, the Swiss champ is aimed at men. On the other end of their brainstorming spectrum lies the heresy of heresies. Should they subtract tools? Like the multi-purpose hook. It was created in the times when you had to put the string around the parcel that you could carry the parcel together with the knife, not to hurt the fingers. Today, we get penalized by the post if we do that. Or should they ax the small blade? A throwback to the days when you used a knife to erase errors written in ink. And today it's very practical to carve something out of wood or to cut paper. You can work very precisely with this uh, small blade. Or maybe lose the punch for making holes in leather or wood. Or drop the scissors. Will the scissors always stay in this form? Or are there any changes planned with a spring, for example? While the factory rethinks every existing product, they also invent new ones. Besides the 100 versions of the Swiss Army knife, the company makes more than 250 other pocket tools. And inspiration is everywhere. 
Heinz von Oy is a volunteer firefighter with nearly 30 years of experience. He's also in charge of fire safety at Victorinox. So it was only natural that he saw a new product opening. As a firefighter, he needs a multi-purpose rescue knife he can handle easily with one hand. So he designed one, and it's a lifesaver. This is the window breaker. With this prism piece, I can easily break a hole in a front window, which I can afterwards saw out with the front window saw. Drivers can use the same tool to rescue themselves. If I sit inside a car, I can break the glass with this tool from inside to outside, and like this, I will be able to leave the car. We also have other good parts, like this screwdriver. With this, I can give the front window a final kick to come out, after I saw it out. Heinz's groundbreaking design hit the mark. Today, this tool is in service with fire brigades across the world. New products take time to develop, for the same reason the old products have such a sterling reputation. High standards. Every tool starts as a sketch. Then a brainstorming session refines the idea. The final concept takes shape in CAD. Next comes prototypes. Then they build the parts to make final decisions. If it gets the green light, it'll end up here, on the production line. But today, it's not a new product pounding through these machines. It's a classic. The Swiss Army knife blade that we're following. Laid flat, each of these steel coils stretches the length of five Olympic pools. A single roll makes 8,000 blades. A mere drop in the ocean compared to the millions they make annually. And here inside, the stamping tool is cutting out the blade. The stamp itself has two parts, the bed and the die. To maintain 100% accuracy, both parts are made in-house. The steel is running here. This stamps out through this tool. And out pops the blade. Nothing goes to waste. Offcuts are shipped back to the supplier for recycling. Two and a half thousand tons of steel flows through the factory's 15 stamping machines every year. And the machines are multitasking, so the factory can change the stamp to make any part. Contrary to popular belief, not every knife produced at this factory is a Swiss Army knife. The defining factor for a genuine Swiss Army knife is its length. These 91 millimeters, this is based on experience. It has to be a, a perfect dimension to put the knife into the pocket. It's not too big, but on the other side, you need also a, a, a certain dimension that it's practical to work with, to keep in hand. When I take the whole range of Swiss Army knives and I count together all different models, that means also variation color of handles, I get around 100 different items, 100 different models. There are sometimes very small differences. It's a product, but it's also uh, for some people, it's a miracle. It's cult, it's the Swiss Army knife. Back on the factory floor, our blade has made it through stage one. Perfectly shaped, but not smooth. Next stop, polishing, where metal meets stone. Ceramic stone, to be exact. Very 
hard stone. Water helps to lubricate the stones, keeping them flowing freely as it washes away residue from the cutting process. Powder keeps the parts from sticking together. Every part gets this treatment. It's a simple concept, but it's the fastest and most efficient means of polishing large quantities of small items. At any given moment, more than 10,000 parts are taking the stone bath. The process takes from five to eight hours, so a single part could stay here all day. And then the stones are polishing the edges and they become very smooth. Once ready, blades are extracted with magnets. Our blade emerges polished to perfection. It looks like a knife, but it won't yet cut the mustard. Because raw steel is too soft. When the steel is too soft and you cut, for example, frozen things or, or hard bread, you have the steel which would be damaged and the blade becomes dull in a short time. To toughen up, our blade moves on to the next stage. Hardening. This oven solidifies the steel at 1050 degrees. High enough to change the molecular structure of the metal. The key element of steel is carbon, but carbon is a double-edged sword. The more carbon you put in the steel, the hardener it becomes and the less flexible. Flexibility is key. A brittle knife will break easily. Less carbon yields a stronger, more flexible blade. So the right balance is essential. After stamping, polishing and hardening comes the next stage of production, grinding. Now here we are in the department where we Grind the surfaces onto the right dimension. Two discs each side of the grinding machine work in tandem, creating those perfect limits. The standards are unforgiving. Deviations can't exceed 0.02 millimeters. Beyond that range, and tools won't fit together in the handle. For example, where you have up to six or seven plates each together, and you have tolerances, one like this, one like a little bit this, it's nearly impossible to fix them with the rivet. So it has to be precise that you can really assemble and fix it the right way. Water lubricates the blade to prevent heat buildup. If you would do this without water, you can damage the steel a little bit, and afterwards, when you drop the knife on the floor, it could break. Finally, out pops a familiar tool. But it's still not the end of the journey. The blade goes straight to sharpening, where micrometers check the exact measurements. You wouldn't know it, but you're looking at an irony in steel, because the very blade that made the company nearly destroyed it. When I look back in our history, I think the biggest challenge for Victorinox was September 11, when suddenly from one day to the other we no longer could sell our products on airlines and in duty-free shops. So after September 11, our sales dropped for the Swiss Army knives more than 30%. In an instant, this knife turned from a useful tool to a potential weapon. It was a huge blow, but Victorinox fought back. As soon as production fell, they hired out their workers to other companies to keep them employed. 
and they shifted sales to emerging markets like China and Russia. When you look at Switzerland, first of all, it's a small country. And secondly, we have no natural resources. We always needed to use our imagination, our creativity to be successful in the global market. So they got creative and expanded their product range to include watches, luggage and perfume. It was the biggest challenge in the company's history. But determination won out. Victorinox went from being a single-minded firm to a worldwide diversified brand. And in the ultimate counterpunch, they developed a bladeless model that can be carried on aeroplanes. September 11 really has shown it that it can be dangerous if you depend only on one product category. Product sales now span the globe. But manufacturing this knife will always remain at home. Ebach, in the heart of Switzerland. A town with a legacy much bigger than its 3,500 population. Since its invention, every single Swiss Army knife has been made in this quiet valley. And each carries the Made in Switzerland mark with pride. This is the machine that brands each blade. Feeding these blades through the stamp is time consuming, but it's one of the most important steps in the entire process. Because this stamp goes on what is probably the most famous pocket knife blade in the world. But the story began with a very different product. In the late 1800s, the Swiss Army looked to acquire a multi-purpose knife for their soldiers. Karl Elsener I stepped up to the challenge, but it whittled him down. He spent most of his private money to continue, and he almost got bankrupt, and only thanks to the help of some relatives, he could prevent bankruptcy. After five years of development, Elsener not only solved the army's problem, he added a few extras. A knife with blades at both ends of the handle that folded into the handle. It was the original Swiss soldier's knife. A breakthrough in technology. It boasted a total of four tools blade, punch, screwdriver, and can opener. Can opener was also special. Today, with the can opener, you open the can on the top. With this one, you opened it around the top. The punch is a sign of the times, used to make holes in leather saddles, leather belts, and leather boots. It was the perfect tool. From the technical point of view, it was fantastic. It saved Elsener's company, but he didn't forget his benefactors. When he was successful with the Swiss officer knives, without any legal responsibility, he went back to them and paid them the 50% with interest and compound interest. Because for him, it was important that nobody, because of him, was losing one Swiss franc. Originally, the company took the name of its founder. But in 1909, Elsener changed the name to Victoria after his mother. In 1921, the name changed again, thanks to the invention of stainless steel. In the past, that means from the beginning, they manufactured the knife out of steel. It's, it's normal steel, it wasn't stainless steel, it was normal steel. Stainless steel was called inoxidable by the French. So the abbreviated inox was tacked onto the company name. But no one calls this a Victorinox knife. The brand of our company, Victorinox, is less famous than the product itself.
After World War II, the Swiss soldier's knife became popular with American GIs stationed in Europe. The knife's official German name was a mouthful, so the GIs dubbed it the Swiss Army Knife. There was not a brand behind in these days. It was a product, and it developed so strong that it, uh, on one day, it stood for every compact knife with folding plates. This was just a Swiss Army knife. Now it's a global icon. When I show worldwide this knife in the jungle, in the mountain, everywhere, people suddenly know this is the Swiss Army knife. There is no one on the world who does not know this product. The Swiss Army knife has become a little bit a symbol for Swiss quality and reliability. And ingenuity. Today's Swiss Army knife isn't the one used by the Swiss Army. That product goes by the name of the Swiss soldier's knife. In Switzerland, all able-bodied men are required to serve in the army. The Swiss soldier's knife is among their standard kit. Its functionality has evolved over the years. It's uh, very uh, handy because it now has a, a blade that it can open with uh, one hand and it locks. So that's a new feature. In 2008, it was a brand new soldier knife introduced to the army very special with one hand opening blade when you are carrying gloves, for example, or when you are somewhere you have to keep with the hand and you have only one hand free that you can easily open. Close, you can also press it on the other side and close like this. In the military, you're also spending lots of time in the woods, so it now comes with a, a wood saw, which the old one didn't have. It still comes with all its old tools, including the can opener. It works so well, soldiers aren't the only ones who use it. We have really at home no other can opener. We have a knife in the drawer, the standard Swiss Army knife. This is our standard can opener at home. It has everything you need. It's just a cool knife. Of course, so is the ever-popular Swiss Champ. Back on the factory floor, our blade is heading for assembly, but there's one more stop. The parts depot. This team randomly checks each batch of tools before passing them on for assembly. Every month, up to 20 million parts pass this way, including the handles. About 30,000 pairs of handles are made here every day. Most are classic red, but Victorinox offer a rainbow of colors. The handles are made from PVC granules fed into an injection molding machine. Das heißt, dass uh, der Kunststoff kommt als Granulat. The PVC runs as a granulate through the tubes into the machine. There, we warm it up and press it with pressure into the mold, where the shell of the Swiss Army knife comes out. Inside, the machine also cools down the shell, and it comes out shiny and polished. Ready for that all-important branding. This is like the Mercedes star for us. It's our logo. The logo dates back more than a century to 1909. Originated by Karl Elsener to thwart counterfeiters. He recognized that some German companies imitated the Swiss Army knife. And to separate visually from them, he put the first time the cross and shield, our actual logo of today, into the handle of the knife. Today, even the German army knows where to come for the real thing. The Swiss army gave us the permission to sell Swiss army soldier knife worldwide. In 
the handle department, the classic Victorinox logo for the Swiss Army knife is produced with a metal inlay. Other models have their branding burnt into the plastic through a hot stamping process. With only rare exceptions, every product that leaves this factory will bear this stamp. The German one has a, an oval, and in the oval there is the German eagle, also as relief, like this. And the Dutch army has also a similar knife, and they have also their emblem of the, of the Dutch army. The handles will join the tools in assembly. Every part is stacked in precise order. Among them hides the very key to the knife itself and the inventor's most ingenious innovation. It's a groundbreaking spring. It makes the blades open, stay open and close and stay close. This single mechanism controls up to three of the knife's functions reducing the overall space needed for the Swiss champ's myriad of tools. And this gave him the success because he could build the knife very compact and to put uh, a lot of functions in them, not to become too big. The spring also acts as a safety mechanism. I do not close it fully, my finger stays back, you see. It's the blade itself, which closed because of the, the spring. That ingenious spring also hides the secret to the Swiss Army knife sound. The other key to a compact knife is what holds it all together. During the injection molding of the handles, three holes are made for the rivets. They're tiny, but like the springs, they're ingenious. So the blades of this side are fixed with this rivet, the one here with this rivet, the tools on the back with this rivet, and this is a rivet fixing the spring between the, the blades. Weight-reducing aluminium dividers then separate the layers of tools. Bushings hold the handles in place. You see them here, this is a knife without handle. Their function is at the end that the knife keeps really fixed and they are also the points where the plastic handle is pressed on. They, they keep also the plastic handle at the end. Now all the parts come together. Tools, dividers, springs, handles and rivets. Assembling them looks straightforward enough, but few of us would make the cut. You need also a lot of, of training and experience. You do not start in assembling such a knife. You start with smaller models, and at the end, when you are a professional, you can assemble such knives. Logic governs the layout of parts. All tools that open on the left are laid out on the left, with right wood opening tools on the right. A skilled worker can assemble an entire Swiss champ in about three minutes. After being stamped, polished, hardened, ground and assembled, our blade is finally where it was always designed to be but it's not ready to hit the shelves yet. The last step, a final inspection to make sure everything works. It may look fine to you, but it takes sharp eyes to spot defects. A scratch that needs polishing. A handle that needs adjusting. Any part judged inferior is marked. High standards, low tech. A ballpoint pen does the job. Rejected. Afterwards, we are really sure that only best quality leaves the house. But the best quality doesn't always end up in the hands of the consumers. Piracy is a, is a very big problem. Every great product is ripped off. 
Counterfeiting is a huge global problem that hits more than the company's bottom line. We have rather big problems today with the Chinese imitations. When you bring out the innovation product, in minimum one year, we have the fake from China on the market. And they fake everything, right down to a botched emblem. For a company that prides itself on Swiss workmanship, the fakes cut to the quick. The company vents its anger in this display, but they still have to deal with angry consumers who've been duped. This knockoff might not fool you, but this one could, especially since many fakes are sold in clamshell packages. That means the consumer cannot check them by opening and closing. Those ingenious springs not only keep the size of the knife to a minimum, they act as a safety net for consumers. Only an original Swiss Army knife will make this sound. When you try a Chinese version, it's very quiet. Sometimes even the blade does not close the right way, and, and ours make really the, the click and clock. So if you go to a store and you want to be sure to get the original one, it's best is you cover your eyes and you just <laughs> try the product like this. Besides the telltale snap, look for the Victorinox cross and shield. Another hallmark of authenticity is the inscription on the big blade. Then you can be by 99% sure that you have really a Swiss product. Other companies have legitimately tried to cash in on Carl Elsener's ingenuity with their own versions, but none can quite cut it. They couldn't reach the, the quality, they, they couldn't reach the functionality. They were always a step behind. Of course, even these guys occasionally get it wrong. Every model the company has ever made, all 350, is on display here, including the knives that might have been. These are prototypes that didn't hit the mark. Exhibit A, a model with a built-in flashlight. It was before the LED technology uh, with the torch, and uh, it makes not sense to sell this uh, as a Swiss Army knife when you have 10% knife and 90% uh, torch. So uh, we decided not to produce this. Exhibit B, a knife with a built-in ruler. Too small to read. Then there's the Swiss Army knife comb. It's a bit hygienical reason. Uh, you have blades, you cut bread and cheese, and you have the comb. So uh, all together makes no sense. Nor does the Swiss Army knife onion and olive fork. We also didn't see enough potential the market. Or the Swiss Army Knife potato peeler, something you're unlikely to need on the go. The museum also holds tribute to monstrosity and to miniaturization. Probably the smallest knife in the world. It's not just a piece of metal, it's functional. It's an exact replica of the original soldier knife. At the other extreme, this knife made for Goliath has more than 200 functions. Which are really not practical to carry in a pouch at your belt. <laughs> then come experiments in beauty, mother of pearl handles, and the ultimate tribute to luxury, a gold-handled knife embedded with 800 diamonds. This is not a knife to to cut the uh, bread and <laughs> cheese. <laughs> it's just uh, really for someone who wants to have the, the most expensive one. Luxury can cost around 130,000 euros. But practicality is hard to beat. 
and the classic Swiss champ stands the test of time. I'm sure every Swiss person has at least one Swiss army knife. Or more. I carry two knives with me. One of them is the Traveler. It has a second time zone. It has an alarm clock. It shows you the altitude, a barometer. This is very nice for hiking. Islan has been up Mount Kilimanjaro. And then I also like to take the signature with me because this has a very nice, white, strong LED. And it has a small bold point pen. And I have already signed important contracts with this little Swiss Army knife. For those who think they can live without one. I always try to recommend people to carry for a few days a pocket knife, perhaps just a small classic. Then I tell them after these few days, leave this knife at home and then I am sure after the first day you will miss something and this is the pocket knife. Swiss Army knife owners can be fanatically faithful to this company. As this department proves, the repair shop the company offers a lifetime warranty, so it pays to make a flawless product. This particular knife has no defects, just a long history. This is a soldier knife from 1924. It's marked here on the shank, and uh, it belongs perhaps to a son who has got it from the father and the father from his father, and they really want to carry it on. And so uh, we try to repair this. Some customers collect Swiss Army knives the way others collect stamps. The US has the world's biggest society of Swiss Army knife collectors, with some 10,000 members. Collectors even have their own model. This is our biggest model we have in the assortment. It's more for collectors. We just put every part which was once produced for an army knife in this model. So we uh, have here 80 different functions. We have the electronical functions, the cyber tool, the LED. So it's, it's really everything uh, you find in the whole Swiss army knife range is integrated in this model. No matter what the repair, this team will handle it thanks to the lifetime guarantee. Sometimes uh, the people here have even to produce a new handle from old raw material because such handles are not no more available. But uh, a lot of things is, is possible here. Believe it or not, this handle, nearly 90 years old, is a plastic composite. The company introduced this plastic specifically for its knives. Just one innovation in a long line of ingenuity. Back on the factory floor, our knife reaches the end of the line. Here we have again the blade we have seen in the stamping process, we have seen in the polishing process, we have seen in the hardening, in the assembling, everywhere. That's the knife. Only a handful of companies can boast of thriving over a century on. For Victorinox, the cutting edge is their creed of perfection. And it doesn't get more perfect than this. Is still the right knife today, yes.